Hi, this is Kevin Dio from Upscale Audio, and today we're going to talk about matching the impedance between a tube preamp and any kind of a power amp. I say that as a joke because you do not match them. I had a guy call, well, he emailed, actually, he says, well, this guy told me that on a, on a forum that I needed to match uh, the impedance of the preamp to the power amp. And I said, oh, he didn't say that. He didn't say that. I mean, that's like the dumbest thing on earth and nobody would think that. And he, he forwarded it to me. I'm like, oh my God, the shit that goes on in forums and whatever, right? Look, here's how it goes, okay? Typically, you're gonna look at the, the preamp, a tube, solid state preamps, you don't have to really worry about it, okay? You can run whatever you want, it's no big deal. With a tube preamp, you just go with the 10 times rule and the 10 times kind of rule, we'll call it that. What does that mean? This balanced audio technology preamp, which is a very, very, very good preamp, has an output impedance of 300 ohms. So the input impedance of the power amplifier should be at least 10 times that. Now that would mean it would have to be 3000 ohms. Most tube amplifiers are going to have an input impedance of 100,000 ohms. Most of the good ones, the big names, okay? Uh, they might vary from that a little bit, but most of them are going to hover up towards 100,000 ohms. So it is a complete non-issue. Solid state power amplifiers have an input impedance typically of around 50,000 ohms. So that also would not be an issue for this preamp or this one. This Prima Luna has an output impedance of 256 ohms. So that's very, very low and you can run it really with anything, just like this one. So when does it get a little goofy? Or when do you need to be concerned? Well, like some of the Prima Lunas, uh, they have an output impedance of, I think, over 2,000 ohms. Now, does that make and there's a lot of other preamps that are the same way. Some manufacturers, they don't even tell you what it is. I mean, that's bullshit. But it is not uncommon to have a higher output impedance. Now, does that make it a, a, a worse pre, a preamp that's not as good because it's got a higher output impedance? No, it doesn't mean a damn thing. It means that's what the design is and that's the way that it is doesn't hurt anything. It just means that you want to be a little careful hooking it up to a solid state amp. Most solid state amps, like I just said, what is it? About 50,000 ohms, but there are some amps that uh, are not. The old Pass Labs Aleph series, as I recall, got my old brain, uh, I think even one of them had an input impedance of like 10,000 ohms. So if you've got a 2,500 ohm output impedance, you need at least 25,000 ohm input impedance. That past labs, I don't know, you'd have to kind of try it and see how it works, because I have not. Some of the Macintosh amps, uh, as I recall, have an input impedance of around 20,000 ohms. Uh, so what does that mean? Well, we have used those beautifully with Prima Luna tube preamps that have an output impedance of 2,500 ohms. I mean, because it doesn't tell the whole story, right? These are just general guidelines. So we've used them beautifully. So if it gets kind of close on that number, you know, you have to kind of try it or talk to somebody who has. Talk to somebody who is experienced and know what they're doing, like my salespeople here. Oh man, so what else do we need to talk about there? You know, on this matching impedance thing, if you have a tube amplifier, and if you are hooking your speakers up to the 8 ohm tap because the manufacturer says your speakers are 8 ohms, you're screwing up. Don't do that. You've got to try the other taps. You've got to use the one that sounds best. Your speakers are not 8 ohms. They're not, they're 8 ohms nominal, but they might have uh, droops and drips down to 2 ohms. I mean, it, the, you gotta try other taps because if you don't do that, you really might be missing out on the, all the tube glory and all the things that make tubes just so fantastic. Now, what's the last thing to think about? How about cables? 
if you have a high output preamp and then you're going into a low output uh, power amp and you're doing it with a 30 foot cable, you want to be careful. Uh, you want to check the capacitance. Or, uh, you want to check uh, well, capacitance, picofarads per foot. Make sure it's low capacitance uh, if you're running a really long cable, okay? But we can help you with that stuff. Typically, it's really not an issue, uh, really. I mean, it isn't. But I want to make sure to demystify it. I want to make sure that you folks are happy, you know? I got great salespeople. They're not on commission, and we really dig this shit. We really have a great time. And I want you to know that's why we say what we say, right? At Upscale Audio, we're going to treat your system like it's ours. Thank you.